Okay, so let's take a look at the arrow method for tackling syllogisms. Now, don't get me wrong, this method here is not really commonly used amongst UCAS students, but that's probably because they don't really know about it. So let's take a look. So number one, we need to recognize the three different arrows that we'll be using whilst applying this method. So, so number one, number two, and number three. Okay, so this first arrow here, right at the top, so number one, this represents 100%. Now, what are the keywords that we associate with this arrow? Well, they will be all, always, must. So keywords that, you know, represent 100%. Now, it might not make that much sense, but stay with me so every time you see all or always or must or any other keyword similar to these then you want to draw this arrow right here don't worry it will make a lot more sense further on okay so what about this arrow here so this arrow here represents 50 percent what are the keywords that we associate with this arrow well they are some many sometimes and there are various other keywords as well, representing 50%. Okay, so what about this last arrow here? So the one with the line over it. Well, this arrow represents 0%. So what are the keywords that come with this? Well, they are non, zero, no. So every time you see these keywords here, you want to be drawing this arrow right here. Every time you see some, many, sometimes, you want to be drawing this arrow right here. And every time you see all, always, must, you want to be drawing this arrow right here. Okay, so let's put this into practice. Now, how do we represent this information into our diagram? So using the arrows that we have right here. So. Step number one, identify the keyword. So here it's sum. So which arrow do we draw every time we see the word sum? That is this arrow right here. So I'm going to write doctors, arrow, and then singers. And then because it says sum, that means 50% or around 50%. So I'm going to draw the line coming out of it. Okay, so let's take a look at the second one. So all the doctors are human. So the first step, once again, is to recognize the keyword. So here it is all. Now, what arrow, which arrow do we draw when we see the word all? So we draw this arrow right here. So the one that is a normal arrow. So how do we represent this in our diagram? So we're going to write doctors and then arrow humans. Okay, so let's take a look at these two diagrams here. So we've got doctors and singers. So some doctors are singers. So that's what this diagram is representing here. And the reverse, it can also be the same as well. So some singers are doctors. What about this other diagram here? So doctors, all doctors are humans. That's what this diagram is representing here. Okay, so what about the reverse? So we know that all doctors are humans, but are all humans doctors? Well, we haven't been given enough information here to say that all humans are doctors, but we can say that some humans are doctors. That's because all doctors are humans, and because they are humans, then that means that some humans are doctors. So let's do another example. So some teachers are blessings and some blessings are pencils. Now, some teachers are blessings. What's the keyword here? The keyword here is some. So we're going to draw this arrow right here. So we're going to write teachers are blessings. So some teachers are blessings. What about the second one? Once again, keyword here is some. So we're going to draw this arrow once again. So some blessings are pencils. So some teachers are blessings and some blessings are pencils. Now it would be a lot easier if we would merge these diagrams together. So just like with Venn diagrams, how they overlap each other, here we are going to merge the diagrams. So, so this is what the merged diagram looks like. So this is one separate diagram 
and this is also one separate diagram but because blessings has overlapped we literally treat it as one so we put down one blessings okay so let's take a look at this example here so why not you pause the video have a go and then play the video once you are done and try and merge the diagrams together some people are kind all doctors are kind so the keyword here is some so the arrow we are going to draw is this one here so some people are kind people are kind what about the second one all so the fact that it says all this is the arrow we are going to use so all and then some so then all doctors are kind so Now, how do we merge them? So it's going to look something like this. So this is what our diagram should look like merged. Okay, so let's take a look at this real life example here. Now, it's totally up to you whether you want to pause the video and have a go yourself, or you can watch me attempt it. So, let's have a go. So, no doctor is anemic, many vegetarians become anemic. So, let's break it up. So, we've got point one and point two. So, let's focus on point one. So, no doctor is anemic. So, doctor, and the fact that it says a no, that represents this arrow here. So, the one with a line going over it. So, no doctor is anemic. Okay, what about the second one? Many vegetarians become anemic. Now, the word many represents this arrow here. So, many vegetarians become anemic. Now, how do we merge these two diagrams together? Well, it should look something like this. And obviously in the exam you want to get used to drawing the complete diagram all merged all in one go. So rather than drawing the first diagram then the second you want to get into the practice of drawing the whole complete diagram. Okay, so now we've got our diagram right here. Let's attempt each of these questions. So let's look at the first conclusion. So place yes if the conclusion does follow, place no if the conclusion does not follow. So the first one, no doctor is a vegetarian. So let's look at this. So does this diagram tell us that no doctor is a vegetarian? Okay, so there is a possibility that some doctors could possibly be a vegetarian if the vegetarian is not anemic because as we know no anemic person is a doctor but there is no distinct relationship between vegetarians and doctors it could possibly be that no vegetarians are doctors so we don't really know or no doctors are vegetarians we don't really know for sure so the answer to this would be no we don't really know because there's no like solid evidence here suggesting that no doctor is a vegetarian. Okay, so some vegetarians are doctors. Now here we don't really know for sure whether some vegetarians are doctors. Once again, there could be a possibility on the case that, you know, that the vegetarian is not anemic, but in this case, we don't really know for sure. So the answer here is no. Okay, so the third one, no one that is anemic is a doctor. Well, this one does follow. And the reason being it does follow is because since no doctors are anemic, then that means no anemic person can be a doctor. What about the fourth one? So all vegetarians are anemic. We don't really need to look at the diagram for this one because it says here many vegetarians become anemic. It doesn't say all the vegetarians are anemic. So with this one, the answer will be no. An anemic vegetarian cannot be a doctor. Well, this answer, an anemic vegetarian cannot be a doctor. Well, the answer to this will be yes, that is correct. Because as we know from here, no doctor is anemic. So absolutely no doctor can be anemic. 
And so an anemic vegetarian obviously cannot be a doctor. 